If you have over $200,000 sitting stagnant in your bank, retirement account, or home equity, then you're literally losing money. On this show, you learn how to get that money working for you consistently and conservatively. Learn to grow your nest egg with your host, Sean Winslow. Let's dive in. Welcome back to another Finance Friday episode. I'm your host, Sean Winslow, and this is the Multifamily Money Podcast. What is going on, everyone? Happy Friday. You know the drill. Every Friday, we hit you with the tips, tricks, and strategies to get your money working for you because we know it's not what you make, but what you keep. Guys, I'm not going to lie. That was like my fourth try. I, I think I nailed it on that one, though. <laughs> the, uh, the life of a podcaster. It's, it's uh, yeah. I, I need to do like a blooper reel and share it with you guys. <laughs> it's, it's, it probably make me laugh um, and, cr- and cringe a little bit. But uh, welcome back to another episode. Um, I've got a good one for you today. Um, you probably could already tell by that catching title there. But before I get into that, you know the rule. You know the fee. I don't make any money off this. Don't have any ads. Um, so it's all about getting out to more people and just sharing the knowledge. And the only way to do that is, is to have you share the show. If you found any value, got you know any, like as, as the review I'm about to read here, any knowledge nuggets, if you got any of that, Please share with a friend, colleague, family member, acquaintance, anyone who you think could also get some knowledge or value from this show. And if you haven't, please leave a rating and review. And talking about ratings and reviews, I have one today that I want to share. Um, Five-star rating and review from Tommy um, titled Knowledge Nuggets. And he says, there's some great takeaways on each show from each high-quality guest he has. Keep up the great content. Well, thank you, Tommy. Um, really appreciate you taking um, time out of your day to, to leave that. This this really helps gets get us in front of more ears um, on Apple Podcasts. So thank you. And again, if you haven't done so, everyone, please, please leave a review. All right. Let's get into it. So as the title says, principal pay down is a better tool than a savings account and or your 401k. Um, and I know we've all been conditioned, right? You work your W-2, you put money, you contribute money to your 401k, your IRA, your 403b, whatever happens to be your um, qualified retirement plan through your employer. Um, and obviously, making contributions investing is better than not doing it all. So for those of you that have done it, that's great, right? Thinking about your future, because there's a lot of people out there in this country that don't. You know, you, you've heard the stats, you know, crazy amount of, I think it's like 80% or more people in the United States don't have $400 to put towards, you know, an unexpected emergency. Like that's just crazy. Um, so for those of you that already are investing, that's great. But I just want to share a little strategy with you here because I recently had a conversation with someone who like most people in, invests in a foreign gay. And to be fully transparent, I did at one time when I worked, you know, in finance, I, I invested um, in a foreign K and my contribution level was pretty strong. I looked it up and the average is 7%. Um, I did closer to 20, to somewhere between 15 and 20%. And then there was the employer match as well. And also in full transparency, I don't have one anymore. I rolled it over into solo 401k and guess what? Invested in real estate. Um, but that's not the point of this episode. The point of the episode is why I believe principal pay down. And what do I mean by principal pay down? I mean, you buy a piece of real, real estate with leverage. So with I'm a loan, some debt, and your tenants, because this is an income producing asset you're buying, your tenants are paying that debt down. They're paying your principal down. So over time, you are growing equity solely just on by paying down that debt. Someone else is paying it down for you. That's not even to talk about the appreciation that the real estate is going to get or the cash flow you make off of it or the tax benefits. That's simply I'm just talking about growing equity. Someone else is growing your equity. You know, 401k, you're putting you're putting money into an investment, right? So every year you're putting money into a mutual fund, ETF, stock, bond, um, product, and you know, you're making annual contributions or probably more like, you know, every paycheck. And that's compounding over time. Um, whereas on the real estate, you are buying an asset using leverage to actually get more. Cause let's think about that. Um, so I looked it up and about the, the average, probably someone is 
contributing is probably around, it's not actually, it's not even the average. I just took this amount, 20,000, because based on if you combine both the employer and the employee contribution based on some averages, it comes about to that amount. Now it's probably a little higher, but I'm just going to use 20% because our 20,000, because also if you were to buy a, a $300,000 property, house hack it, get it for 5% down plus closing costs, plus, you know, some money to start operations, maybe make a, a few, um, fix the property. Um, it's about 20,000 as well. But the point of that is if you were to take 20,000 and you are investing in a mutual fund, ETF, stock bond, whatever it happens to be, you're only able to buy $20,000 of that instrument, of that investment vehicle, right? Whereas with real estate, that 20,000 would get you, like I just said, a $300,000 property, which then that 300,000 compounds over time with appreciation, right? Um, so it's that 300,000 that is the principal pay down. Whereas the 20,000 you invest in that stock, bond, mutual fund, ETF, whatever it happens to be, that's the 20,000 that's appreciating over time. Just think about that. But let's get into some more, more numbers. And, and this person asked me like, why I don't continue to, you know, at least have some type of, you know, why didn't I just roll over into a traditional solar porn care or, or IRA um, and, and invest, continue to invest in the market. And that's simple. I'll, let's look at so a duplex I bought, um, bought it for, let's just call it 300 to make it easy, but it was, it's 315,000. Um, and I did not put five, put more than 5% down for a few reasons, put about 20% down plus closing costs, plus some money, um, that I needed to fix a few things. 80, let's just call it 80,000 that I, I put in there. Um, and I just did the calculation based on appreciation and hence principal pay down, not even talking about the cash flow I made off it because this thing's this thing cash flow is like crazy. It's over like 1500 a month. And you're probably like, what? And yeah, it was just really good timing. Uh, solid, solid buy. But based on that, I've made 83,000. So I've more than doubled my money in two years. In two years, I doubled my money. I never doubled my money in two years in my 401k, never. Now, I know the last two years you've probably done done well in your foreign K. Maybe if you made some crazy bets, but there's a lot of foreign K plans out there that don't let you do that. They don't let you invest in individual stocks. You've got to invest in you know ETFs, mutual funds. So if you had a foreign K like mine, where even in the self-directed portion of the the four hundred one K, you only get invest in certain mutual funds, ETFs. There's no way you're doubling your money. Um, the best I ever saw was close to twenty percent one year. Um, so you're not doubling your money in two years. So that just got me thinking like, well, I obviously told the individual like, well, look what I did with this and double my money. You're not seeing that. And, and the principal pay down is just so strong. So let's look at a few scenarios. What if you're someone who just puts your money um, into a savings account, right? Let's say, so you take that 20 grand, you put 20 grand every single year. Um, let's say 1% average annual return, which is, very, very optimistic. I'm being very nice. You're probably on average not getting 1%. So for 30 years, you're talking about $722,000 um, at 1% for 30 years, 20K a year. That's what you'd have. Um, initial, And now if we were to look at a 401k here, so you put in same thing. Between your employee and employer contribution, you put in 20K a year for 30 years and 7% average annual return, which is again, that's fair. That you probably they say six to eight, let's call it seven. And you're getting so after 30 years of that with you know twenty thousand dollar contributions, total contributions of six hundred thousand. This is for 30 years you're making these, these contributions too. For both for both the savings and the 401k. So for twenty thousand a year up front, first year, twenty thousand, then twenty thousand a year for the remaining um, a 7% average annual return, you're going to walk away with $2,092,497.35. Now you may argue, yeah, Sean, but you might increase the, the contribution over time. Sure. Um, if you had, let's say you would average 50K a year um, for those 30 years, you're talking about um, $5,103,652.07 if you invested 
on average 50K a year between employee and employer contribution over 30 years with a 7% average annual return. That's solid. No one, no, no one's sneezing at that, right? Five mil, 100%. That would have been 1.5 million total contributions. Now, if we do the same thing for the savings and you did 50K a year um, at 1% average annual return, again, total contributions of 1.5 million over those 30 years, you're talking about one. Million eight hundred six thousand six hundred thirty-seven dollars and two cents in a savings account at one percent average annual return over thirty years. Obviously, not not that terrible, right? Um, now let's look at real estate. Let's say for that same twenty thousand dollars, instead of just putting it in a four hundred k, you save that every year and you bought a house half. Let's just say a house half, and for ten years you moved to a new house, lived in it for a year, fixed it up. And then the next year, you did it again and again and again for, for 10 years. And the reason I said 10 is because as of now, that's the limit you can have to for residential mortgages in your name, in a single name. Um, so let's say you did that and that av- you were able to find, you know, this is, you know, this is all hypothetical. Let's say you're able to find a $300,000 house every year. You know, maybe the reason for that is you're doing like value add projects, um, you're putting a little money into it, or you're just you're just able to find a three hundred thousand dollar house, right? So five percent down, um, plus closing costs and some money you want to put in, in to do work. You're talking about you know about twenty k. Now you do this for ten years. That total appreciation over. You do that for 10 years and then there's an additional 20 years, right? So we're doing the same 30 year time horizon. However, you're only making 10 contribute 10 contributions versus the 30 in the other two scenarios. So you're only, you know, 10, that's 200 K total. Based, I looked this up, the average appreciation for a home in the U S you know, over the, over the last couple of decades has been 4%. So let's say it continues at 4%. You're talking over 30 years for 10 houses that you bought at 300K. We're talking total appreciation of $8,865,077. So 8.8, nearly 8.9 million in total appreciation. However, you're able to use leverage, right? That's how you're able to buy so much more than just the 200,000 contributions you made. So there is still some debt left, right? That first property, it's been 30 years, so it's completely paid off. Who knows, maybe even took some of the cash flows and have paid off some of the other properties. But let's say you didn't. And you've so you've paid off one and there's still nine left to be paid off. So the remaining debt outstanding you have at this time period, did the calculations, look at it, amortization table, and it would be 678000 Four hundred sixty-seven dollars and eighty-three cents. So six hundred seventy-eight thousand you have left in debt. You take that away from the the eight point eight six five million. You have total equity. Wait for it. Now remember your total equity. Even if you did fifth, okay, your total equity for your foreign K. If you put twenty a year for thirty years, now you made thirty years of contributions in this scenario at seven percent average annual return. Was two million, just just over two million, two million and ninety two thousand. Now for the savings account, it was seven hundred twenty two thousand. Again, if you did fifty k a year average in contributions to these two for savings, it would be one point eight million, and for um, the four hundred k, it would be five point one million. So we're looking at at those scenarios. Now, if you'd only made twenty k in contributions per year for only ten years, not the entire thirty, your total equity at the end of thirty years. Would be nearly 8.2 million, 8.186 to be exact. And that's not even taken into account cash flows. Now you could have anywhere, depending on how much you were cash flowing, anywhere from 200 to 400,000 that you would have made um, in cash flows over 30 years on those 10 properties, maybe even more. Because as you start to pay, you know, pay these properties down, like that one property, now you're making straight cash flow. And another 10 years. So if you started doing this at 30, 30 years later, you're 60, say 10 years, and now you're 70, the remaining are all paid off and they're all this cash flowing like crazy. Yeah, you're still putting stuff away for reserves to fix stuff up, but there's no mortgage payments anymore. 
you could even take a line of line of equity off of that that eight plus million you have in equity. Maybe to go my, buy more properties. Maybe it's just to go on an awesome vacation with your entire family, and then that you know the cash flow can pay that that line of credit back. There's just so much you can do with that. You know, with your four hundred k, you only can take you know up to fifty k loan off of it. <laughs> You know, line of credit, you could take 100, 100K out and do some cool stuff with it and easily pay that back with the cash flow that that thing would be spinning off. So it's about the principal pay down and that, that equity. So there's a combination of that appreciate, appreciating over time, 4% per year and paying down the debt, which your, re, your residents pay down. They pay down that debt. So that principal pay down combined with the appreciation made you nearly worth nine figures. Excuse me, eight figures. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> eight figures, nearly worth 10 million. You know, another 10 years, it, it probably could be combined with the cash flow and everything. And we're not even talking about, yeah, we're not even talking about the cash flow. We're not even talking about the tax benefits. Yeah, the other, the other two are foreign Ks in a qualified plan, so you're not paying tax. But if it's traditional, which most likely it's not all Roth, you're going to be paying some tax once, once you make some um, distributions. If you do it right in real estate, you're not going to pay any tax, right? And then you're going to do the step up basis when you pass it on to your to your beneficiaries. This is why it's so powerful because you're able to use leverage, one in a meaningful way, but also in a smart way to buy more than you can. And then your residents are paying that leverage, paying that debt down, which is thereby creating more equity for you. And on top of the fact that real estate has, you know, appreciated on average 4% per, per year. And then if you, you're lucky and you, you, you know, you get into moments like we just had over the last two years, you might see a, you know, 10, 20% bump, if not more in a year. But just even on average, 4%, you're still coming out way ahead. Based on 20 grand a year contribution for 10 years versus a $50,000 contribution a year for 30 years, you're still 3 million ahead, not even including the cash flows and the tax benefits. To me, it's a no-brainer. Principal pay down is a way better plan than a savings or 401k. To me, it's the ultimate retirement strategy. Because then once you pay all that debt off and you re retire, you don't have to worry about paying debt. You have, you have all that equity and it's just cash flowing. So now you don't have debt over your head. You have equity that you can take lines of credit off to do cool things with and you have a cash flow to pay those line of credits back. And when you take the line of credit out, it's not taxable, but it's essentially like income. You take 200K out, that's income to you, but you're not taxed. And the cash flow of those 10 properties, more going to pay that back. It's going to pay it back and then you're still going to be making more. This is the next level stuff that you got to be thinking about. This is what gets you to the point where you can live the life of your dreams. Do the things you want to do. Do it with the people you want to do it with whenever you want. Be able to give back to the institutions and to the people, the charities, the organizations that mean a lot to you. you know, it gives you that time to do things that you want to do gives the time to make this world a better place. All right, everyone. I know this was a lot of numbers um, to just be thrown thrown around via you know via listening and not actually seeing. Um, but I hope you're taking some notes down. I hope you got the point that you know we're always you know we've been conditioned to invest a certain way for retirement. And you got to you got to ask yourself why, like why is it because it's the best or is it because it's the best for someone else who's making all the money off of you investing that way. You just got to think. To me, this is the best way to do it. And it's the way I'm going to continue to do it. All right, everybody. I hope you like this one. As always, easy doesn't pay well and instant gratification is self-destructive. So get out there. Not only work hard for your money, but have your money work hard for you so you can create the life of your dreams. Be able to do what you want with who you want, when you want. We can all make this world a better place. All right, everybody. I'll catch you on the next one. 
Hey, this is Sean Winslow. After being in the financial service industry for years and having candid conversations with good people just like you, I realized that so many of us are wanting an investment strategy that provides solid returns and consistent income without the bumps in the road. There's little known secret that your financial advisor doesn't want you to know. There is investment out there that is less volatile and the returns are stronger. Get more details by going to greenbriarcg.com and clicking on the free e-report. And by the way, if this show has provided you any value, then feel free to leave an honest written review and of course, share it with a friend who needs it. See you next week for another great show.